that that this min that this min is one. Okay, let's say one is the minimum between these. We do, we, we don't know we, we, unless we're given the exact epsilon value. We could actually compare. But let's just say it's one. What does this tell us? Well, then, uh, therefore, what we now know is that one is less than four times epsilon, which implies that one over four is less than epsilon. Okay, from choosing the min to be one, we now have this particular fact here. Okay. So now let's do the proof. So let's take our conclusion. Let's let's sorry. Let's take our premise. Okay. What we know is this, is that now we're choosing delta to be equal to one. So what we have to have is this, is that we need x minus two is less than one needs to infer, we need to infer from that, uh, that x plus eight all over x plus three minus two is less than epsilon. So we need now to work this through to get this, but we're not actually going to do that. What we're going to do is this, is that we know from our, from our, from our reduction with respect to here, okay, we know that x plus a all over x minus tr plus three minus two is in fact the absolute value of x minus two all over the absolute value of x plus three. So really what we want to show is that we need to show that the absolute value of x minus two less than one implies that the absolute value of x minus two all over the absolute value of x plus three is in fact uh, less than is less than epsilon okay but from this so from the premise so from the premise okay we have we have that the absolute value of x minus two is less than one okay now uh, what we know now is that we know then this implies that the absolute value of x minus two all over the absolute value of x plus three must be less than don't forget x plus three x plus three is bounded below by four okay so this must be less than one over four okay because x plus three is actually bigger than four okay but what we've just shown up here is that one is less than four times epsilon uh, implies that one quarter is less than epsilon so this implies that x minus two all over x plus three is in fact uh, one over four is less than epsilon so this must be in fact this is like transitivity. Uh, this is, is in fact less than epsilon, which is as required. That's what we needed to show. Okay, there you go. We've gone from the premise and we've shown this particular fact is true. That's when we chose delta to be equal to one. Say we choose delta to be four epsilon. So what we need to do is we need to show that x minus two less than four times epsilon implies, we'll use this version of this particular absolute value here, that this implies that x minus two all over x plus three has to be less than epsilon, okay? Uh, so let's think about this here. So what we need to do is this, is that we have, so from, from the premise, from the premise, okay, we have, we have that the absolute value of x minus two less than four times epsilon, that this implies that the absolute value of x minus two being less than four times epsilon, if I divide this here by, once again, x plus three, okay, to keep this inequality true, I need to divide over here by a number that's smaller than x plus three. And we know that that number that's smaller than x plus three is in fact four. So once again, this implies that x minus two all over x plus three is in fact less than epsilon when we choose our delta to be four times, four times epsilon. This proof was a little bit more straightforward than the first proof in this particular series. The first proof in this series, we looked at, we looked at a, rational, a rational function that had a numerator that was a quadratic and a denominator that was just a, that, that was just a linear function. But the, more, the most important thing about the, 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 first, the first proof, the first example was that it was insoluble, okay? Uh, albeit this is insoluble too. Uh, this is a little bit easier. We're only left with one condition, uh, one absolute value to try to figure out what, what, what's happening with, what's happening with it. Yeah? Where in the previous example, there was actually two of them, which made it a little bit more complicated. So actually, this is actually a, a lot more easier than the previous proof that we had in this particular series of proofs. Okay, guys, uh, once again, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats. Uh, and I hope that this video, another video in a series of videos dealing with calculus and limits, and in particular, epsilon delta proofs, 
I hope that this proof and this uh, presentation here, this video, I hope that was intuitive. And more importantly, I do hope that was helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.